Henry, my character Henry in the second book, uh, O Play That Thing, comes to America to get as far from Ireland as he possibly can. And at some points thinks he's been successful, you know? So he, 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 he lives and works with Louis Armstrong for a while, which I suppose on the continent is about as far culturally, racially, whatever, in all senses, away from Ireland as he possibly can. But uh, he eventually is reacquainted with Ireland in the form of uh, large, particularly in the form of John Ford, another Irish America, American who loved a place. He claimed he was born in Ireland, but he wasn't, and loved a place he didn't really know, uh, but actually created one of its most vivid representations in The Quiet Man, a picture that people all over the world think is Ireland, and actually in some corners of Ireland is Ireland, and it's a brilliant film. So it's fascinating that a man who wasn't born in the place I suppose it's no more fascinating that some of the great American film directors actually weren't American, you know, by birth at all, that they, they came to the place and, like millions of other people, occupied it and owned it and invented it in many, many ways. So what Ford was doing was the exact same thing, except instead of inventing America, which he'd done already with the Westerns, he then invented a version of Ireland, which is The Quiet Man, you know? So uh, Henry goes back to Ireland, eventually, with John Ford. Doesn't, uh, you know, his, his story has not become the quiet man. His story has ended up on the cutting room floor before the film has been shot, you know? But uh, he revisits the consequences of this relationship with, uh, with Ireland and America years and years later, when he realizes that uh, just that the, even the quiet man had its influence on uh, filling the coffers of the IRA. But later on, you see, when I was writing the book, I started in 1995, Jerry Adams, who was the leader of, and still is the leader of Sinn Féin, was admitted into the United States for the first time in 1995. He wore a suit for the first time. He was no longer a terrorist. Uh, so it was the beginnings of what became known as the peace process and the agreements that were signed on Good Friday, I think it was 1998. And then this, you know, the decision of the IRA to basically vote itself out of existence. And during the writing of the books, all this was happening. So I didn't know really that the book, that the, the, the story was going to have a happy ending. And this is where Irish America become, comes in over the, you know, in many ways, comes over the, uh, the hill and saves the day like the cavalry. Bill Clinton's role is vital, an Irish American. And, and other Irish Americans who spoke in rooms secretly as like go-betweens between Irish men who would not sit in the same room together and now actually sit by side, side by side making important political decisions. But at that time, would have been happier shooting each other or maybe getting somebody else to shoot them uh, than to talk to each other. And Irish America's role in ending the violence is really very, very significant. Without Irish America, I don't think it would have happened.